What's up and good afternoon guys. Welcome back to another video. I want to thank all of you guys that have been following along thus far in the mini truck gooseneck trailer project. Obviously um, this thing's turned into way more than I had anticipated which is usually how most of my projects go but they always end up being just so much cooler. So this started out as like a little utility trailer for the mini truck there. You guys suggested it'd be so much cooler if we built a mini gooseneck albeit not practical at all. And well, if it's cooler, we're probably gonna do it. So we have this giant monstrosity of a trailer here for the old mini truck, but damn if that thing is not turning out super, super rad. So in the last video, and hopefully you guys are like watching the series, and if not, you know, go back, check it out, and see all the cool stuff that we're doing to this thing and figuring out as we go. Uh, but last video, we got our supports in because we realized we should probably beef this thing up a little bit. So we got those running down there. We added our stake pockets. We got a little bit more bracing going on on the neck portion here. And then we actually got our tongue jack all nice and welded up. I uh, still need to get that bolted on, but that'll probably be happening in this video. And can we just talk about how like my welds are slowly getting better there? I mean, look at that, looking good. I hate to say it, but I don't think they were lying when they said practice makes perfect. Now, today, oh, 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 that is sharp. Oh, that hurt. Oh, I hate walking underneath this thing. This is, I can't wait till we can actually put the freaking uh, coupler on there, which I've ordered the new coupler because you guys told you in the last video, uh, the coupler I ordered, it said it was in stock, but it was four to eight weeks out. So we've ordered a different one that hopefully ends up mating up properly to the front there. Um, and I know things might look just a little bit wonky, but just because there's nothing holding them together right now. We're gonna be moving away from the trailer today. And we're gonna be working on the mini truck because well, a gooseneck trailer is no good if you have no gooseneck hitch on the truck. So as you guys know, um, this is a dump bed, which means we're gonna have to get really creative here to keep the dump bed functionality there and still be able to hook up a gooseneck hitch to it. And I've scoured the internet looking for all kinds of different hitches and basically stumbled upon like the most DIY hitch setup that I could find. And that is in this box right here. And the reason I say DIY is because a lot of them have like the full size rails meant to go in between the frame rails of like a full size pickup truck. Obviously, that is not a full size pickup truck. So I found this kit right here, which is meant for flatbed trucks and for guys that are gonna you know, DIY it and weld up their own coupler or their own hitch, I should say, to their flatbed truck. This thing is so massive. Like, look at that beefy bad boy right there. Jeez. So I found this guy here, and again, this is meant for flatbed trucks, but it has no giant rails going across it, nothing, which means we get to do that ourselves and figure out exactly what size is gonna work on the mini truck. Um, cool thing about this though, and, it, and I'm not sure if this is unnecessary or if my mind, like this is necessary, but this is a turnover ball and like a hidden ball. So what that means is you can have your ball inside, right? Inside your bed like that, or you know, underneath your bed, however you wanna word it. And then you've got your pin here that holds your ball in and this usually, you know, sticks out underneath the side. So you just reach in, you pull this, you just flip that over, and then uh, assuming you have, and then you flip it over, and you've got a nice flat surface. Now the reason I think being able to remove the ball like that, uh, not that I think we're gonna, you know, need to flip it over because if we're using the flatbed, this has to be removed. But I think being able to pull that ball out is gonna make removing it easier from underneath the bed before we put her back into dump mode, as we're gonna call it. So let me get this bed cleaned out here. It's starting to look like the uh, inside of my OPS. And we'll get her lifted up and I'll give you guys kind of my idea and I have no clue if this is gonna work. Alrighty, let's get the bed lifted up here. And try and figure this out. Now, as you guys can see, our biggest problem here is that being a dump bed um, is that we have this hydraulic ram right in the way. And it doesn't matter where we move this, if we offset it to the side or whatever, it's not gonna change anything because this thing still has to lay down that way. Now, we totally changed it over to like a telescoping style like they have on dump trucks, which we really don't have room for that, nor is it really worth doing here. Um, we could actually put it up in the front. We're gonna work with what we have here. And what I think my plan's gonna be and it's gonna be kind of a pain in the butt, but I don't think it's gonna be that big of a pain in the butt. So, when this thing's all the way down, that ram clears this subframe that was built right here, which is what they built the entire dump bed off of. Obviously, we don't wanna mount it to the bed itself or to this framing because all that's holding this on is those two bolts that are acting like hinges. So we'd be putting a lot of stress on that system if that's what the actual gooseneck hitch was attached to. I would ideally like to attach it to this system right here, but now that I'm looking at it, does that go down inside of it? Like now I'm kind of worried. This might be like foiling my plant. See how this is obviously below? When this is down, it might double stack right here, which I didn't really think that far ahead now, did I? So if that doesn't work, 
what I can do is I could put some type of bolt system in here up in the front. That way the bed is locked down. When it's down, maybe we have some pins right here that go through. Dang, I'm totally just like having to reinvent this right now. This, this threw me for a loop. I thought I had it down until we came and looked at it. Uh, that might be what we have to do actually now that I'm looking at it. This setup is pretty strong here. The subframe that they built, um, everything's welded to this part of the actual truck frame. And I can assure you, you know, even home built and like quadruple stack like they did here at the C channel. Anything they did on top of this is way stronger than the stamped Chinese frame. Okay, let me lower this back down and see how these stack. I mean, there's a chance we might just be going here and deal with pins here. Let's watch her come down. Oh yeah, it definitely stacks there. Plan B, this is actually easier if it works. Now, albeit I don't think this is quite as strong as my original plan, even though we just totally figured out my original plan would never have worked. I think we're gonna be able to make this work and it's actually, I believe, gonna be a little bit easier to do than my other method here because my other method you'd have to remove it every time you wanted to use the dump bed and you basically would have had to like slide it up underneath here to get it to sit on top of the rails so my plan is we're gonna take some two by two material we're gonna go across here two bars this this plate actually makes up like almost perfectly to where it's gonna sit on top of the two bars we'll weld that in I think Hopefully this like support right here isn't where this needs to be. Then the plan is um, once this lowers down inside of here, there's about a, I don't know, quarter inch gap or so. So I'm gonna make some spacers to fill that gap. That way when she's in there, she's tight and she doesn't wanna, and she doesn't wanna wiggle side to side. And then we'll drill some holes here. We'll put some pins in. And basically once this thing's down, everything should be locked into place pretty tightly. Now, I don't have any two by two by three sixteenths inch square tubing around. And unfortunately I drove the Bronco today, but our friends over at JC Metal Supply are actually gonna be delivering a stick to us here. That way we can keep on moving. So I'm super appreciative of the relationship I've developed with them. They have been my absolute go-to for any steel that I need and they've been rocking it. So I went ahead and lowered the bed back down, crawled up underneath it and marked about where center of the axle is. Um, I know one of you guys in the comments said, uh, most goosenecks are like four inch to five inches in front of the axle. Actually just read an article from B&W Hitches who actually makes that turnover ball that we're gonna be installing on here. And they said, no, you actually wanna be directly above the axle unless there's like something in the way on the vehicle that makes you shift it any which way. And in that case, you wanna shift it like a maximum of four inches forward. So we're gonna go with directly above the axle. So I marked one side here, and then I'm just using a piece of stock kinda clamped in place. And I used my square here, got it nice and squared up, and then transferred that line to that side right there. Do I think this bed is really square with a whole lot of anything? No, but we're playing with a case of good enoughs on this here vehicle. Now, while we wait for JC Metal Supply to bring our square stock, we could actually use this setup right here to find exactly where center of our uh, hole is gonna be that we're gonna have to drill in the bed. This is a good time here to demonstrate a tool. So I went to go put my square on here, and well, as you can see, my square is too long. There's no way to, to get it up on here and square it up. This is why you gotta have multiple types of tools. And let me introduce you guys to the combo square if you've never owned one. So right here, this is a combo square. The cool thing about this is it is completely adjustable. So you just loosen that little knob right there and you could slide this thing to basically whatever dimension you need. And we can adjust it so that we are perfectly squared up there and she reaches. A lot of cool things you can do with a combo square. One of which being if you need to mark something, say for a drill layout, cut layout, or whatever it may be. You know, we'll just use this as an example right here. Let's say we need to find center of this square stock, which this is inch and a half, so we're gonna go three quarters. Granted, you should account for the thickness of the marker pen that you're using. So you can set the square where you want it, and then you can use your marker, and you can mark if you need to you know, chase down a center line of something or whatever it may be. These things have a ton of great uses. They make them in all different sizes. Christian needs help, bro, you got me? <laughs> what? what? No, bro, I can't do it, bro. The 316s, it's kinda heavy. <laughs> JC Metal Supply, we go, look at this. Special delivery, JC Metal Supply, don't mess around. Keeping us stocked up here. We even got this guy helping? We even got this guy helping? Dude, these guys work magic right here. They got Chris to work. Look at this. There we go. <laughs> you are the man, brother, Christian. Appreciate it. Don't worry, brother. Again, if you guys haven't checked out JC Metal Supply, make sure you guys go check them out. Here. This guy's out of breath. He's sweating right now. <laughs> He's a little heavy, huh? Bro, it's, it's getting hot, so <laughs> I can't. What, what, what do you think, man? This, right is, this is all JC Metal Supply steel right here. Good. You like it? Very heavy duty. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to cut my two cross pieces right now. And then I believe 
those are going to fit to where this sits on top of them. I don't know if that's the strongest way to do it, but it's going to work out best height wise to where the, this thing's going to sit about quarter to a half inch below the actual um, bed here. So here's kind of what I'm thinking on how we're going to do this. Um, I'm going to weld all of this up outside of the truck. That way, obviously, I can't really get to those once this is going to actually be welded to the subframe there of the uh, dump bed. I think this is going to be plenty strong, you know? Going 3 16 wall on this. This thing's freaking half inch plate. This is rated for 30,000 pounds. So if you guys have never already, uh, you know, tried to buy light duty gooseneck stuff, it doesn't exist. So I think by the time we have plenty of surface to weld there, there, inside, outside, this portion is going to be super, super strong. Oh, and by the way, Chris over here, um, I was wondering what we're going to do with the space now that we sold the fat scooters, but it's Chris's new office. It's nice. You know, out of the way. It's true. Now, guys, here's another spot where the combo square comes in handy. So obviously, I need to get this piece here centered up in between these two bars, but obviously, you're kind of dealing with a round portion right there. So trying to mark center on here to be able to correspond it with center on these bars isn't super easy. But when you've got a combo square, it's something you can adjust. I'll show you guys, I'm doing this one handed here, but you can basically, obviously this measurement I could pull center pretty easily on. Then I adjust my combo square, squared it up to there, transferred it to the top right there. Then, then you can adjust your square again and basically square that line down and we got us a nice center line. And then from there, all we do is once we get these all paralleled up with each other, you mark that bad boy right there, center to center, and we weld her in place. Not bad. You impressed? Not bad. I'm impressed. Thanks, buddy. Glad to have you supervising. You gonna x-ray these welds when I'm done? Yeah. We gotta make sure this can hold 30,000 pounds. <laughs> I'll be happy if it could tow five, you know? I feel like 5,000 pounds is a win. Well, what happens, what happens if this thing can't we have no idea. If you guys haven't been following along, we have no clue at this point yet if that thing can actually tow this trailer. The brakes suck on the mini truck. It's a four speed, but you really only get into like second gear because it's governed at 25 miles an hour. Granted, I would never want to go 25 miles an hour pulling this thing because there's no trailer brakes on this thing. We, we thought this was going to be a light utility trailer when I ordered the axles and everything. But. Okay, so two things I screwed up on. Number one, I mentioned earlier that I read an article that said it should be over the center. Supposedly, whoever wrote that article said they interviewed somebody at uh, B&W or BW, whatever it is, and they said it should be center of the axle. Should have listened to you guys because I actually read the instructions here and say, no, you should be four inches in front of the axle. Good news is we haven't done anything yet that would screw us up from changing that. So now here's my, <laughs> here's my giant screw up. So I was wrapping my head around this like multiple times, got this thing all set up, ready to weld fully welded it, and then realized I screwed up. This is how it's gonna go in the truck. Now that being said, if you look down here, you'll see that the holes for the actual ball are this way when they should have been this way. So I totally had this turned the wrong way when I welded this thing together. I'm an idiot. I'm not gonna cut this thing apart, nor do I feel like trying to drill through that really thick crap. So we're just gonna eliminate having the old uh, turnover style where it comes out the side here which would have mounted right here. Somehow we probably would have had to drill through this. And this is how you would pull the ball out to turn it over. We're not gonna go with that. So on the mini truck here, I went ahead and got everything cleaned up where we're gonna be welding. I've got my new marks shifting it. I went three inches forward. Also moved my center point there three inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna drill this hole first. Then we're gonna put in our actual hitch assembly where we think it goes. We're gonna eyeball it from the top and then if we gotta tweak it, you know, a hair either direction to make sure it lines up perfectly with the hole saw that we cut or the hole that we hole saw. We'll be able to fine tune it before we fully weld this thing in. Only problem is we don't exactly have the proper hole saw. So we're gonna give it a shot with this booger. Chris uses this on stucco, so it's been pretty chewed up. But he claims it says it's for metal too. So it's got a, a tooth every notch there. So we're gonna drill a little pile of hole from underneath. This will tell us where we're going to be drilling on once we get to the other side there. 
So you're supposed to go four inch hole saw. <laughs> we got four and a quarter. You know, bigger is better. You wanna make it better? What? Dollar. You think it's gonna go through? I got five on it, it says it won't. All right. Even the pilot bit trash. <laughs> we got two layers to go through that. We're not even a quarter of the way through the first piece of eighth inch. The pilot bit, not the skin, the hole saw. Well, you think the pilot bit's not as just as trash as the hole saw? Let me get something I can like stand a little higher. Let's use. Why are we not using our brains today, buddy? Jeez. I'm gonna put all the downforce. Now we're using our brains, Christopher. Now we're using our brains. This is what we should have done from the beginning. I mean, she got through the bed liner, so there's that. I don't know that we're really into the metal, though. <laughs> Yeah, guys, I think it's safe to say that that's that's not cutting. We just polish in the metal at that point. Oh, hey, buddy, you want to give me my five dollars now or later? What? Uh, it did a great job of just removing the bed liner. That five dollars, though, it'll go towards the proper hole saw. Ooh, look at Freshy right there. Dang. I ain't giving you five. I'm giving you some ones. You got five ones? I don't think you do. One, two. Three, four, oh, oh, look at that. We're going to the script club tonight. Well guys, I guess we're gonna have to continue this video tomorrow when we can actually go purchase a, a whole saw that'll cut through metal. But before we do, Chris, do me a favor, buddy. Hold up and show them the new Workport shirt. This shirt turned out super, super sick. Look at that, boom. We got the table of elements going on. Blue collar table of elements. Mm, mm, oh, oh, oh. It's not your size, buddy, it's not your size. Head on over to workfordpail.com if you want to get that shirt as well as many others. And we got all kinds of decals and stuff in stock. See you guys in the morning. Alrighty, y'all. So we are back. I have the appropriate hole saw today. We're going to get this thing knocked out and finished. But before we do, we got a special delivery here. This is not for me, though. Let me go show you guys who this is for. Well, howdy, neighbor. What's going on, man? <laughs> this looks like the thinking spot. <laughs> You're probably not the first guy that's <laughs> had to stand there for a while. So, obviously, you guys watch the channel for any, you know, <laughs> more than a year, you know, James. And James has been going through all kinds of crazy stuff. He's got a super sweet dump truck of business, a super sweet Let's Go Brandon on the side that we did. And well, there's all kinds of controversy that that has caused, but you guys gotta go to his channel to find that out. So it's Get Muddy here on YouTube. Now the cool thing is though, you know, my friends always take care of my other friends and we've created like this big, great circle of friends. And well, James is getting messed with for, uh, you know, Showing his pride in his country, but our good friend Matt over at Speedpool decided we got to deck out James's uh, his pickup truck. So Matt sent over a whole care package here to get your truck decked out. In case any of you guys are interested in the absolute best flagpoles money can buy for your vehicles, they are right there in that box. Um, I mean, you know, feel free. I mean, it's your stuff. So, <laughs> so I'm pulling up to the job site with asphalt, and this lady is driving by in like a Toyota Camry, and I see her like at the side of my truck bed and she cruises past her about another 20 feet and then I think it finally like the hamster wheel started turning and she slammed the brakes on she actually backed up on a busy street and I wish I'd have got this on camera but I didn't um, anyhow she's like what in the hell is on the side of your truck and I you know I was very polite I just said well ma'am that would be a big sticker oh she uh, <laughs> she took about another 10 seconds to process what I just said and and then she goes, whose truck does this belong to? Hoping it was, hoping, you're gonna have to edit this. <laughs> hoping that it belonged to some big company. And when I told her that it was my truck, I think her brain just short circuited. She couldn't think of anything to say, stepped on it and just took off. <laughs> the following day, all sorts of complaints were filed and it ended up turning into a big old deal. So, yeah. Anyways. If you want the long story, go to James's channel. But basically, he's been like shut out of every major job because he had Let's Go Branded on his dump truck, which is insane, you know? You would think we'd have like, I know we don't have a whole lot of freedom left in this world, but you think there'd be enough to put a sticker on your truck, but I guess not. We're just gonna put it on more stuff. So yeah. that's where speed pull is coming in hand here and uh, making sure James's pickup truck can also rock all kinds of cool flags. 
which uh, Speedful made sure he sent out in here as well. If you guys are interested in billet flag poles for your trucks, speedpole.com, check them out. I don't know if there's still a D-Max Rhino discount code. There might be, yeah, try it. If not, he'll probably put one in when he sees this or he's gonna yell at me. Either way, go to his website. All right, make sure you guys check out James' channel. You wanna check him out, but huge thank you to Matt over at Speedful for getting uh, James all decked out here. We now jump back on the old mini truck here and getting this freaking gooseneck hitch in. No more screwing up today. No more welding stuff wrong. We're gonna nail it the first time. All right, so we got our freshy hole saw here. The old hole dozer. That was Chris's nickname back in community college. All right, let's see if we can break a wrist here, cutting through this. Okay, we got through the first layer. Now the fun layer, the corrugated. All righty, we are through. Now the fun part, I'm trying to clamp this big old booger in there by myself. And hopefully, uh, you know, it's not too heavy. And the old hydraulic ram there gives out and then we, we die. Or, I was smart enough to make it a tight fit. I recall doing that, I recall doing that. We don't even gotta clamp it. That's a good fit right there. Get a hammer, tap her in place. Now we gotta make sure it doesn't drop out. Okay, so it looks like we're just a hair off center. Um, it's a good thing we went with that four and a quarter so the true four inch. I'm just gonna say the bit walked. Cause there's center, I don't know. Center's pretty much hitting about center there. Whatever, doesn't matter. It's not perfect, but it's usable. The one thing I worry about is that we are recessed a good bit here beneath the actual bed itself. And you can see we got a couple layers here. This will actually push down. We can clamp those two together, but is there gonna be enough ball sticking out to still attach? I think we're good for the coupler to still attach. I don't think it's gonna rub right there. I think we got plenty of clearance and plenty of room. And worst case scenario, you know, if it grabs on and it rubs a little bit, then it's gonna clearance itself. How cool that looks. I don't know if we're the first mini truck out there to have a gooseneck hitch in, but we've gotta be one of the very few. Okay, now for the fun part, Let's get her all nice and welded up. You guys are probably asking, Rhino, what are you gonna do about chains? And that's a good question, guys, because I don't really know. I don't think I need them. This thing's gonna get used at the ranch. There's, like, what's the point of safety chains? If something bad happens, the truck weighs less than the trailer. This does have a little spring-loaded chain rings here. You can see the springs right there. So, it's not impossible to do. We could totally put chains on here if we wanted to. I just really don't see the point. We'd have to weld in another plate up here. Otherwise, we're through here. My big thing is the less holes we have in the bed, the better when it comes to actually using this as a dump bed and not having a bunch of crap get stuck in holes and all that. like up underneath there. We'll just look at these top wells because you know these areas look good. I pretty much had to just blindly go up underneath there and weld upside down one-handed. Um, I think I even did that side with my left hand. So I'm sure it looks like crap but it should be more than strong enough to tell what we're gonna be towing with this thing. Now next on the list is we got to make sure that this bed is secure because as strong as that hitch is and again it's probably the strongest part of the whole truck now at this point. Um, if we go to tow with it and we rip this entire subframe off with the bed, it does us no good. So I'm gonna try to mimic here. See how there's like a, a quarter inch gap right there. Um, obviously there's one on the other side too. What I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut a couple little spacers. We'll hopefully mimic that quarter inch there and um, we'll put it on both sides so it takes up any side to side slop. Then we're gonna drill through and we'll use some pins 
and that'll give us uh, basically lock this thing together to where this part of the frame is securely connected to that part of the frame which is very well secured. All right y'all, um, before we go to the shop today to finish up on the gooseneck on the mini truck, I'm a tired rhino right now. <laughs> um, we had a massive storm come through last night and it dropped. I mean you can see just how much water is right there. I mean we're solid two inches of water sitting in the trailer here for the golf cart. And I just got a call from my ranch hand who says he can't even get into the property. He had to walk to feed our animals today because our driveway is just completely washed out. Sometimes he over exaggerates, sometimes he's spot on. So we're going to jump in the Mini X right now. We're going to go see because nobody on the property right now can leave either. If there's a giant rut that's just going to tear a vehicle up. And yes, we've fixed this driveway like a hundred times and we all know the culvert pipe that runs over the, uh, or runs underneath the existing driveway, it's too small. So eventually, that's all gonna get torn out. We're gonna put bigger culvert pipes. Um, we're gonna run a couple culvert pipes across the driveway before we even get out to the street. That way all the water can cross before it all gets to one little tiny pinch point. Now the good news is all the work we did down the side of the driveway to keep all the water from crossing has been doing its job. Um, and it's sending all the water down to the street. Problem being is there's so much water that goes down there that that's when it becomes like a choke point down there and weird stuff starts to happen. So eventually I want to run some big culvert pipes underneath the driveway here. That way the water can cross from this side to that side, run out into that field over there and just kind of dissipate like naturally and slowly versus all of it rushing to one point. But everything happens in due time, everything's funny. So we'll get to this eventually. I don't want to put these pipes in until we know where the actual concrete driveway is going to go because that's going to go underneath that. All righty y'all, let's see how bad that area is rutted out. All right, I'm gonna go with he over exaggerated a little bit, but it, it's not that bad. Like you, you got this side you could drive over. That side's not great, but you can see just the amount of like silt that comes down. Um, obviously the pipe that we cleaned out is still working, but look at all this, like this wasn't here yesterday. All of that silt, I mean, that's a solid, you know, four to six inches worth right there, let alone that whole eight inches worth that's all washed down from this way. So. I mean, I'm glad to see that that's working. Other than this rock that came out of who knows where, almost filled it in there. Our little, uh, our little rock riverbed that we made here is doing a good job of slowing everything down, but it's still, you know, making its way through here. And then I believe a couple of our cones here got washed way down there and crossed the road. So it was a lot of water and it, it's not so much the amount of water, it's how quickly um, when the rains come through here, we get the water. I mean, it just dumps a couple inches within a matter of like, 30 minutes and that's that's what really pushes stuff around oh geez i didn't even realize so <laughs> i had all of those uh concrete block up there kind of building a little dam to keep water from crossing over and uh that was right right there is where those concrete block were and look what the water carried all the way over here like these aren't light so we definitely had some forces of water coming through here Alrighty, y'all so we've got the driveway um pretty much all doctored up here. All the neighbors are out today. Apparently the storm last night just blew out everybody's culvert pipes. I mean, they got some 36 inch culvert pipes up the road here and those things like split in half. So there was an insane amount of water. And in talking to the neighbors, the old little tiny culvert pipe used to be plenty adequate out here, but obviously with the fires, there's like no more vegetation left. So all the water just flows like crazy and there's nothing to slow it down. And that's pretty much the issue that we've been dealing with over here. But I think we did a pretty good job here. I've got everything kind of swelled away from the new driveway because it used to just kind of come right up along to it and that's what would wash out this side. So we got it swelled out about two feet or so and hopefully we create this little valley right here so that if it rains again, you know, we're not sitting out here doing as much work. But with dirt roads, you're always going to have to do work. It doesn't matter what it is. Um, you're always going to be doing something to maintain it or repair it. It's just a matter of, you know, not having giant gorges like this running through the center of it. To which I really do need to get some more equipment out here because I can do a lot with a Mini X, but the one thing I can't do is move a lot of material. So I've just been grabbing kind of off the hillside over here because it's close to be able to throw dirt over here to kind of fill some stuff back in. Whereas if I had a skid steer or like a bigger tractor, I could go grab yards of dirt versus, you know, 16 inch buckets full at a time. Now, just to give you guys a little bit of an idea of how much water came through here, this drainage ditch on the side of the road was about a, about a foot deep or so. And well, you could probably see behind me there. She is a solid three feet right there. I mean, we'll give you guys a little example here. I'll kind of stand next to it, but yeah, that's a 
<laughs> we had some freaking water. I mean, you find all kinds of cool stuff that the water moves around. This looks kind of like a plastic mud flap off of a truck. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll save that for later. At some point, we're gonna have to get the dozer back out here. I'm gonna regrade this whole thing, fill this whole drainage ditch in, compact everything back down, and then dig a new one, not quite as big. I might end up making a custom like V-shaped bucket for the Mini X there, and then just run down this thing and create like a whole new, um, a whole new drainage swell. We'll see. That's definitely a project for another time. But but I'm just doctoring up little spots here and there um, before we head out to the shop today. It's the joys of owning a ranch. You are always <laughs> you always got something to do. That's for sure. Now in true Rhino fashion, I'm just gonna do something real quick and easy. Turn into I'm gonna go way overboard. So unfortunately, we're not gonna make it to the shop today because I have spent all day out here getting rid of the giant goalie that went down the middle of the road i went way down there started fixing a bunch of other stuff on the road and I, you know i burned through a whole tank of fuel on the mini x just out here um you know getting this road all dialed in and i was just about to call quits for the day and james called me up he's like hey man you know if you need the wheel loader for anything you know feel free to come over and grab it so you know i can never turn down using the wheel loader so I took the wheel loader and ended up bringing more dirt out here because obviously so much of it is just washed away so having the wheel loader was a huge help brought a bunch more dirt over and brought this whole side up higher probably see it better there I uh, actually left it above the concrete there, hoping that we have extra dirt. That way I'll get through a couple of rainstorms before it washes away. And then I ended up building a little berm right here, as well as a berm on this side to hopefully like let the water be able to build up here um, if it's overwhelming the drain versus just overflowing the side right here and completely washing out the driveway. Will it work? You never know until it rains, but <laughs> ended up burning a whole day out here, which Ain't the end of the world. Um, I actually kind of enjoy it from time to time. That means in the morning though, we'll be back working on the mini truck and the trailer. Alrighty y'all, time to get serious. Let's get back to work. I got notification that our coupler for the gooseneck should show up today. So hopefully that makes it in this video. If not, it'll be in the next video. I did notice yesterday in terms of the spacers that we're gonna be using between the subframe for the bed. Um, I guess they're both subframes. We're gonna call it the bed subframe versus the actual subframe. Remember how there was that gap we're fighting? Well, I noticed when the bed goes down, you'll see it shift just a little bit when it hits the bottom. So what's basically happening is when this comes down, um, obviously we talked about there being a gap here because, there, well, there's a gap back there. This frame is smaller than this frame by about, we're gonna call it 3 eighths to a half inch. So what I was gonna do is I was gonna make quarter or 3 16 inch spacers on each side, and then when this thing sits in there, it's nice and tight and it doesn't wanna go side to side by the time we pin it and lock it together. But I noticed when you lower the bed, it kind of does some weird little shift, and this side is actually touching. I mean, you can see where the metal touches right there. So this piece right there comes down, and it, I think, hits a little bit there, and then shifts in and touches, which means the only gap is on this side. And if you look at the bed when it's down, it actually flushes out well with the body on this side. So I don't know if we really want to mess with that by putting equal spacing on each side, or if we should just let that side be tight, and then we build a bigger spacer for this side, because that's apparently where it's been liking to go. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make two spacers right now, just two inch by two inch out of some 3 16 inch plate, put one on that side and one on this side, and see what happens. Um, if it doesn't get too wonky, we'll split the difference. And if it does get wonky, then we'll just make one big spacer for this side. Now I decided to go three inches big with each one of these spacers because obviously we got two inch by two inch square stock in there. So that'll eat up two inches of this. Then on this extra inch, basically I'm gonna heat it and bend it over. And it's gonna act like a guide that as the bed comes down, if it's a little bit off, the guide will kind of guide the bed over to where it drops in between that frame because obviously we know there's some type of rubbing going on, so something's not perfectly lined up, and we don't want to create any more binding than needs to be there, so the guide should help get that over easier. Maybe, again, I make things up as I go. Now I have no clue where my sledgehammer went, so we're using the old trusty here. She's gonna be nice and toasty warm. Get her out of here. Eh, I don't know if that's quite enough. We might want to go for some more there. So she's gonna sit just like so. Oh jeez. Nothing like having something super hot right over top of a gas tank. Coming down. So she is sitting all the way down now, which means I'm gonna check this other side over here to see what our clearance looks like now, because this side was the big gap side. And we, uh, we're still a giant gap. Shoot, it almost feels like three quarters. I'm gonna get a, a ruler in there or something like a measure, but still a big gap. <laughs> 
Granted, we know this bed struggles to get up. I need the new hydraulic pump for it. Yes, 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 everybody says. The hydraulic pump doesn't even work. Turn this thing into a, not a dump bed, but no, I want the dump bed feature. We just need the new pump. So hold on, let me raise this thing up. Oh, she's really bound on that side. So I don't think we're gonna wanna straighten this thing. I'm actually gonna cut that tab off the other side there and uh, we'll just build up this side. I think straightening it is not, I think this thing was built so crooked that we just kind of have to accept the crookedness of the bed. Oh yeah. Okay, so without having that 3 16 on one side, uh, since we're gonna put all of our spacing on the other side, that space ended up being pretty dang big. So this is the spacer I made for that side. It's still super hot because I just welded it. This is what we're gonna be using on the opposing side. It's strong enough to use as a spacer. And then I ended up spacing these two pieces of, I don't know what that is, three quarter by three quarter, far enough apart that we could actually run a pin through the middle and we're not trying to drill through all of this. Okay, so we've got this spacer tacked in place here and let's go for the close. See if this works. Fingers crossed, hopefully it does, because the battery's also dying from putting this bed up and down so many times. But let's see what happens here. It's gonna be tight. We don't want it tight, tight. Oh, she closes. And it feels like there is no play in the bed, so that's good. Now, I'm gonna see if it'll go up. It's gonna struggle a lot right now because the battery's practically dead, but as long as we're not super tight and wedged in there, which is our goal to not be, uh, we're basically fighting that balance of being just tight enough to where there's no slop in it. So when we pin it, we don't have like some weird stress going on the actual bed itself, but loose enough that it's not locked in there tight to where the hydraulic pump really has to fight to unlock it. All right, I think we're good. I think we're good. That wasn't tight at all. Oh, but the battery's dead. Okay, so I just made a quick trip to Home Depot here. And unfortunately they didn't have a clevis pin that's long enough to not only get through that and our spacer, but we also got to get through that two inches. So ends up being just about six inches is what you need. So for now, we're going to use some 5 8 bolts here. Went 5 8 because that's obviously the same thickness as a clevis pin that we'd be putting through here. So if I find a six inch one later, we don't need the nut and the bolt. But for now, this should be just fine for testing. Plus the hole will already be the right size for a clevis pin. So we're going to drill through here. It's going to essentially sit like so. We'll do one there, one there. I'm probably gonna end up doing one on each side here in the center. The only problem is we need to drill a good sized hole through about six inches. It's not gonna be easy. So I'm gonna drill them separately, but we need everything to line up perfectly because the hole size is gonna be pretty much exact. I don't want a bunch of slop in it because the whole purpose of this is to take any weird slack play shifting out of the bed. So the tighter we get this, the less wear we're gonna put on those two hinge bolts back there. So my master plan here is I'm gonna lower the bed I'm gonna take this super long 3 16 bit. I'm gonna use that as my pilot bit. And assuming I can hold this straight, I'm gonna go all the way through all the layers, then lift the bed and I'll be able to drill this separately from that. Cause obviously trying to drill through six inches with a bit that is barely six inches long, isn't gonna be any fun. Especially considering the bed has to be down and it's a real tight space to get in there to drill. So hopefully my plan works. <music> trying to work over here oh you letting us know you're coming through oh okay uh yeah so anyways now that we went through with our super long drill bit through everything when it was all down and in place we can now drill these out separately versus trying to send that 5h drill bit all the way through you know four plus inches of material here so we now know each one of those dots right there means we are about as in line as we can be and we can pretty much drill each one of these from either side there which is going to make this a little less painful, but drilling big holes in steel without a mag drill sucks. It's not my favorite thing to do. So I got both front holes done and I'm over drilling for the day. So 
We'll see if those middle ones ever end up actually happening. But let's check right now to see if our holes that we drilled all the way through there end up matching up perfectly and my plan actually works. If not, we're gonna be uh, wallowing these holes out just a little bit. You think it's gonna work? You wanna make a bet? Huh? You wanna make a bet? Yeah. What are we betting? What do you got? Oh, well, let's see what you got. Lotto tickets? One dollar? You got a dollar. Okay. I mean, I got three dollars. I bet three dollars. Three bucks. Three bucks. That is you, can't, you can't force it in, hit it with a hammer. No, no. Well, slide right in. Can I wiggle it? Wiggle it. Uh, wiggle it just a little bit. All right, here we go. I'll go to your side. I'll come to your side. This side's easier to film anyway. There's no battery in the way. Oh, let's see. I can see through it. I can see through it. What? See, man. Oh, you, you gotta see, make yeah. sure I'm not lying. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh oh, wait. Well, I mean, uh oh, uh oh, give me my three bucks. Hold on, I gotta wiggle it a little bit. No, you just did. No, I gotta wiggle it a lot of it. <laughs> Probably a little too much tension on the bed. No, I might just have to find the right way to lines, you know. It's like the stars and like. I don't remember I paid you. Are you an Aquarius? I need money. I'm broke. You're broke? All right, let me try the other side. Then I'll, then I'll give you your money. What, you want? Or we get to double or nothing. I think we should double or nothing. No, we don't, we don't need to double or nothing. Yeah. That's, that's 20. You don't need that. Three. Just for shits and giggles, let's see if it works on the other side. Before we start reaming stuff out. Not that we wouldn't have to ream it out anyway. Hold on. Before you lift it up, let me go through here. It's close. This side has to go through like five pieces though. All right, pick up on the bed. Yeah, it's going, it's going now. We made our tolerances a little too tight. Nothing we can't get in there and ream them out a little bit. Sometimes a little slop is your friend. Alrighty guys, well, after a little bit of reaming, we got it to go in there. Nice and easy, like butter now. I wish there was more we could do tonight, unfortunately, the coupler that was supposed to show up today hasn't shown up. What? Can you check the other side? Oh, you want me to check the other side? Okay. You can't just check one side. Three dollars? A dollar? Okay, I'll, I'll take a dollar bet that the other side works. Okay. No wiggle. Has to slide in just like that. Oh, jeez. You and your no wiggle. This is the tighter side, too. <laughs> no. Sorry, it went in. It went in. You wiggle. I, I extra pushed. I didn't wiggle. That counts. I don't think it counts. That counts. This guy, this guy. All right guys, well again, unfortunately, our coupler didn't show up today. That thing's been like the biggest vein in my existence here is that uh, stupid coupler. First one didn't work out. Website said it didn't stock. Ended up being 48 weeks. This one said it should be here today. Oh, oh thanks buddy. I got part of my money back. Since we pretty much got everything done here, and we've pretty much got everything done here, once that coupler shows up, which will be or should be the next video here, that means we can actually finally test this thing and see if the mini truck's gonna be able to tell this before we're even finished, because who knows at this point. We're real nervous about this, at least I am. But with that, we're gonna wrap up. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that you're not missing out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out workfortapparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you gotta be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. I'm out. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah.